What's up, guys? It's once again MP4Podcast.com. You remember a couple of years ago, back in 2011, when the PlayStation 3 servers got hacked and, you know, the service was down for about two months and so, and Sony kind of made up for it, uh, for the inconvenience, by giving you two free games and so on. I think it was actually four. It was two PlayStation 3 games and you got two PS PSP games and so on. But... A hacker by the name of Todd M. Miller uh, was one of the hackers that was involved in this, uh, you know, hacking the PlayStation 3 servers. Uh, and I guess he knew that, you know, the FBI was tracing him or something like that. Or maybe, you know, they contacted him and says, hey, we're going to take your computer. Maybe they had to get a search warrant. But what he decided to do was smash his computer and destroy the hard drive. You know, he probably even took the hard drive out of the computer and smashed it. So the data was completely gone. I mean, maybe somehow, you know, you could probably read it. Uh, I mean, if you had the plate that was smashed, maybe you could pull certain parts of it. I mean, if you wanted to, you know, try it for 10 years or something like that. But uh, it was pretty much destroyed. And probably even trying to retrieve that type of data probably wasn't even worth it. Um, you would probably have to really get some high-end and even invent some new technology to, to recover data from a smash hard drive disk. You know, because if a drive is bent, I guess, maybe, you know, you could theoretically pull parts off of it, maybe. But I'm not quite sure. I'm not a programmer. I'm not a computer engineer. Um, but it was enough to destroy the hard drive where the FBI was like, we don't have a case right now. Now... The judge who was involved in this whole type of this whole this whole um, issue, he gave Todd M. Miller one year uh, house arrest. So he had to stay in his house for one year. He also gave him three three years of probation. He kind of let him off because I guess he said he had kind of a hard upbringing or something like that. He didn't have a really good childhood, and um, he told him to get his you know equivalent to a high school diploma. And so on. And he only had a ninth grade education. You know, I kind of feel that an education really isn't, um, really, it isn't determined on how much you know from high school or college or so on. And I kind of feel that an education is just what you absorb as a as a person. I mean, you could probably be 10 years old and learn computer programming. I mean, that's like the matrix and be able to hack computers and so on. So does that person have a low IQ because they have the ability to hack computers and program? No, I just think that educate people just have different types of educations. Some people go to college and, you know, they take liberal arts. You know, they just learn a little bit of everything. But then other people go into biology, they learn about cells and all this other type of stuff it's you know really deep into science or computer engineering so i can't really say you know that he had a ninth grade education ninth grade edu ninth grade education from the school system yeah but he still is very smart to be able to hack computers and break into the sony uh, um, servers and get all the information I mean, you, you have to be smart to be able to do that. I mean, you, you have to know maybe Linux, uh, computer programming, uh, type command or whatever. So I don't really think an education is always valued by you going to school. You learn other things along uh, the way um, through life. I mean, maybe you learn something at your job that becomes valuable and that makes you a millionaire or something, you know, you saw a problem with something, you, you came up with a solution, or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, it just kind of reminds me also of Die Hard 4, when Bruce Willis went to get that other uh, kid that was a computer hacker. Can't remember the actor's name right now, but uh, when Bruce Willis went to go get him, and he was looking out the window, he saw these FBI agents, and he takes these two big giant mag uh, magnets, the electrical magnets, he, you know, he just swipes them all by, goes r r right by all of his computers. I guess he had server racks and, you know, he's just, and you can hear the, 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 the computers frying like, kind of like that, the hard drives. But, you know, 
computer hackers are pretty intelligent. And I'll say this about Sony. Sony sh should have had all that data encrypted. They had everybody's credit card files and everything on a notepad that wasn't even encrypted. So that's kind of bad on Sony's part. So even if the servers did get hacked and they stole the file, it would have been encrypted and they wouldn't be able to read the um, the notepad if it was in encrypted. So bad on Sony, uh, but it's still, it doesn't make it right to hack the servers. So hopefully um, Sony has learned their lesson. But I thought this was a pretty interesting story just because this hacker seems to be pretty smart. He knew he was going to be in a lot of trouble and he knew to take that hard drive out and smash the hell out of it so he wouldn't get 20 years in prison. So anyway guys, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you can help me out, give me a thumbs up. Once again guys, this is mp4podcast.com signing out. You guys have a good one. Later guys, bye.